bro! It worked! I totally did that intentionally. Let's go, dude. Lads, it's time for the next episode of my grind to Unreal Rank in Fortnite Zero Build. And in today's video, I'm going to give you all my best strategies for getting through Diamond Rank as easy as possible. I'm going to show you one of the best drop spots on the map, hands down, all the assets that you can use to make those end games as easy as possible and even get those victory royales. And I do manage to get a victory royale in the diamond lobby in this video. So be sure to watch it all the way through because I'm going to be progressively developing your game plan as this video goes along. Comment down below what your current rank in Fortnite is right now, what your go-to loadout, or maybe what your secret drop spot is. Use code SARHARD in the Fortnite item shop if this video helps you out, and of course, be sure to like and subscribe. Let's start by explaining the drop spot, and I was mostly landing on Avatar Island in the northeast part of the map for my entirety of Diamond, and this island in particular had a rare chest on the very top that I like to beeline for, but even with this island gone, this is still a very good spot to land because of the assets surrounding it. You could always land on the windmills or the oil rig north of here, or the smaller island that's right next to it, which is actually pretty good in build mode as well. But the real power of this drop spot comes after you land, when you work your way into the lumber mill and you actually have have an NPC here that you can hire and this is a munitions NPC which is very powerful it'll essentially replace any equipment that you're holding and will even give you chug splashes as well this drop spot also has a vending machine which is good for farming gold or getting a weapon if you need it there is a bounty briefing as well so you can see where other players are around you and sometimes a car spawns here too which is very very useful when you have an NPC but I'll show you that tactic a bit later into this video once you have all these assets we're efficient past the early game and you're gonna want to figure out who's taken the boss medallions and try to avoid them as best as possible and just carry all these assets into the end game now if you still need a loot boost at this point the train is actually a decent option this season as they buffed the safe to give you purple loot minimum the train does take me through reckless railway and there is another NPC here that I should mention Poseidon is hireable and he does sell chug splash though we don't interact with him in this round mostly we just gatekeep the players that are inside Reckless Railway very quickly and then maintain our loot on the train since that is our priority. And since this does put us much closer to Mount Olympus, my focus shifts to the coin holders that are around that area. Yes! Yes, we caught the train, dude. Ah. Oh. Skill. By the second or third circle, you want to shift your focus to collecting your mid-game assets, such as the radar antenna, the mod bunkers, or even getting another NPC if you happen to lose your first NPC. And speaking of NPCs, let me point out one of the most important NPCs on the map, that being Clara in the cemetery. This is going to be west of your original landing spot, and she's one of the most important NPCs because she sells shockwaves. And you should look at shockwaves as a get out of jail free card if you get yourself in a really bad confrontational situation unless the circle is pulling here over Clara and you can just stay here and defend the cemetery you're gonna want to avoid using these shockwaves and use them exclusively in the end game I instead roll around avoiding confrontation using my vehicle because my priority is getting to this half in half out circle that happens around storm seven or eight that's when the storm starts forcing other players to move from their positions into awkward situations it's much easier to pick up eliminations because their loadouts will be really strapped I do use my car but utilizing my equipment I take over a good position which nets me two easy eliminations here See, of course he's got a sniper really I did two damage and he died in storm and I got that a live okay Got to be careful here. And I actually luck into a vehicle which carries me into that final confrontation, but unfortunately I get in a bit of a car jousting situation with another player and I lose the high ground. I do pick up another kill, but end up in a situation where I have to blind shockwave, and unfortunately I don't hit the roof behind me. A true dice roll situation, but there's nothing to do but give a GG on this round.
god, dude. This guy had no damage on him. Jeez. I was just hoping I, when I like hopped out of the car that I wouldn't fall off the hill, but I did. In my first game of Diamond 2, another player actually takes the rare chest from me, but my knowledge of Fortnite physics gives me a big advantage. Oh! Oh! <laughs> it worked! I totally did that intentionally. Let's go, dude. I get the rest of my early game assets without any contest. In this game, I actually get a two-seater car from the Lumberyard. And these next couple fights are going to show you why I prefer the Whiplash over the G-Wagon. Just griefed him with the car, bro. Kind of the benefit of a two-seater right there. Essentially, a two-seater allows you to siege other players, but they can't counter you by hopping into your vehicle like they can with a G-Wagon. This prevents them from stealing your vehicle, and there's a lot of odd situations where better players will try to do that. And this tactic confuses even the best players. I've eliminated diamond players, even an elite player doing this. However, when I'm using this tactic in the middle of the map, I get collapsed in on by many different players. And the best thing to do here is to play small, which I do by going inside of this building and finding a place where I can manage all the angles, which actually picks me up an easy elimination with the sniper. However, I'm keeping my vehicle in mind the whole time and I double back to it and managed to luck into a free coin. Though honestly, I thought I picked up the Cerberus coin, which was right there and is definitely the most important medallion in the game. If I had that, I probably could have actually won this round. But unfortunately, I slowly lose all of my assets, my NPC, my vehicle, and then just my ability to control position. And the end of this round really goes to show you how important holding your assets for those moving circles truly is, because I had absolutely no advantage and no real way to survive this situation. We're not even uh, contesting here right now. We're moving again. You're dying in storm. You're an idiot. Why would you chase me? Top five for elimination, so that's decent. In the next round, I slithered my way into a top 10. And my drop was so hotly contested, I didn't get any assets like an NPC or vehicle. But I did have a sniper rifle. Wow, dude. Poor guy. But I'll take it. Since it's so late in the round, I'm playing these safe positions very carefully. But for some reason, all the most aggressive players decide to take a fight in the dumbest spot imaginable. And more than half my lobby gets eliminated in the same exact place as the storm is closing. Which gives me great position to gatekeep and I do tag this guy for quite a bit, which leads him to get eliminated later on. That little Cerberus thing helped him. I dink with that Midas, though. So. Or it's not even the Midas. Ah. Uh... 
he died to someone else. But knowing that there's still two players unaccounted for, I continue to play with the circle, play my positions, and I end up with a very easy third party on this final fight where I can hold the hilltop, and not once did I have to abandon my high ground until the final play of this game. I want them to fight before me. This dude has so many coins too. He's trying to reboot the cards. Let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. Oh, finally got a win in the rank grind in diamond. Jam, I saw you there. I knew I couldn't drop it. Thank you. Thank you for being my good luck charm today, Jam. GG's. But I guess this just shows how important the victory is. Two eliminations in diamond. First place, I got 32%. Utilizing the strategies I outlined in this video, the rest of my grind through Diamond was actually pretty casual. But the matches I've shown you are really the best ones I could use to teach you how you should be playing at this rank. He had nothing. If you're really trying to camp your way through these ranks, it's very easy. You can get 2 to 4% without ever touching another player and just making top 10, as Bush Camp Dad has shown. But if you're really trying to excel and get better in the context of Fortnite, my videos will definitely help you out, so maybe check out another one of my rank tip videos. Share it with someone you love, and of course, use code SARHOT in the item shop if this video helped you out.